colour is the uh, is the music of fashion. And some people are tone deaf. This one I like because it's nice and frou frou. It's just got to be exaggeratedly big. Oh, that's pretty profesh. Do I want to look like the evil queen? I know that I'm an evil queen anyway, but... All hail! It would be very dramatic and I could swoosh about the stage on that nicely and it would be fun. So I'm uh, Grayson Perry and I'm choosing the shortlist for my robes that I'm going to wear at the graduation. And the thing I want to do with it is sort of set a precedent for sort of chancellors so that they should sort of reflect the college that they are the chancellor of in their robes. And dangly wanglies. They love a dangly wangly, don't they, yeah, fashion they students? Them. If only I looked like that. That could be kind of bonkers. So I'm always up for a bit of bonkers. Today I'm presenting to Grayson. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about it, but I'm really looking forward to it. And it's it's quite exciting, I guess, to kind of meet meet my idol. I'm super happy to be shortlisted. I told my mom and she's really happy. <laughs> For me it's like really excited and, and I'm quite nervous as well. I'm so excited. I'm really confident in uh, make it, making my design to be reality. It doesn't matter the result because I'm very happy to talk to him face to face. My actual design is inspired by uh, Knickerbocker Glory. I can see the, the coolness factor is high. <laughs> that is in temperature, obviously. I wouldn't want to be cool in any other way. <laughs> I don't have a like, specific concept for my uh, project. It's just like a new technique I've invented. Would you be able to do that for the whole garment, you think? If you give me time, I can do it. A year is only 365 days. <gasps> Have you got a drawing of what it looks like on a person? Not really. I, I need to know what it's going to look like on me. These are nice samples. They're quite, they're not particularly summery though, I'm slightly worried. That's my slightly worry. I like these samples you've all done, these are good. And that's, that's really nice as well. You've almost got too many ideas here, that's the thing. There's no obvious winner in some ways because different, they each have strength. I think the, the, the thing that's swaying me in the end is the chancelleriness factor. You know, this is, a, this is a chancellor's robe. It's a bonkers chancellor's robe. Thank you all, really, really thank you all for coming in and you've all done amazing work. It's been really hard this time actually to choose a winner. There was one person who I thought got the brief right. and the winning design is Yuzan. There we go. <laughs> so congratulations. <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy and still shocked. Before this competition, I, um, I saw him on Instagram and like all kinds of social media. And I feel really excited because he's, he's so amazing. He's like a really great designer. And I really like his style, so I think he will be perfect in this garment. We were at Grayson Studio and I bring some of my designs and the further development of the kind of structure of the garment to him. We're seeing the first sample and converting that into reality. Yeah. That's the long yeah. journey and it's often tricky. And it could change, but only for the better, only ever for the better. <laughs> he seems so relaxed. I feel a bit, I feel a bit, I'm like, maybe I'm too nervous for this. 
you know, decide at the end. As the Chancellor, I think yeah. each bead represents a student. Yes. yes. Well, I, think <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think about each hundred beads represents a student. <laughs> it's obviously going to be very, very time consuming, but we yeah. can get teams of people all having beading parties to do that. It's a lot of beads. <laughs> I think what makes this garment unique is it's actually very Grayson, but it's taking Grayson's um, aesthetic and look to a couture kind of level. The amount of beading and work kind of reflects something that you would find from uh, a couturier in Paris, for instance. It's going to take a lot of times and it will need a lot of body help. I think most people like uh, do me a really big favor because without them, I got. I don't think I can really like finish this garment. I've been helping her to manage the project and gather volunteers. So I know there was around two hundred thousand beads ordered for the project. It's on a huge scale. The whole thing is a challenge, so I'm like feeling pressure every day. Basically, I've been waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning to like 6 in the afternoon, beading the whole thing. Basically, I've been working non-stop on it. Uh, it's taken like a really long time just to knit it the base. And it's going to take like maybe a double time to sew all the pairs on it. So it's going to really take a long time. The most difficult, stressful moment, I think, was where we were trying a different structure which had netting to hold the shape and it wasn't really following the design and also it was making Grayson incredibly hot. So that was a real moment of apprehension, really. Today was the first safety and it's um, not really successful. Grayson seems like not really happy about the shape. This is starting to look like a 1940s evening gown. That's the drawing I was aiming at. And what the discussion we had right at the beginning was that there would be air in it. I think there would be a really big amount of work to do. I'm a bit in despair of it. So the biggest challenge was keeping the shape up of the design, otherwise it would have collapsed on itself. How did that happen? How did you end up with a strange dangly bit that suddenly changed the design? I mean, I can do the technique, but you don't know what will happen because sometimes mistakes just happen. <laughs> So, um, since we last saw the rope, we've added on this built-up neckline. Oh, yes. So there's much more shape to it, so it will sit up around. This is beautiful here, though. Yeah. Um, we've lengthened the slits. Lengthened the slits. Uh, we've hemmed it. Um, yeah. What else have we done? Lots more beading. Yes. yes. It's looking a lot more finished. I mean, the amount of beading is couture-level beading. I, I honestly didn't expect this will be so successful like at this stage but it magically did so it looks really good just as I imagined before. I think I am an undersea Maori princess with a jetpack. <laughs> <laughs> what we've basically created is a structure that can hold knit because knit naturally drapes and falls especially when you put beads on it so we've kind of had to defy gravity a bit in this. So we tried a number of solutions and in the end we went for a kind of structure a bit like a crinoline from the 17th century to hold it up. I think it's fab, it's great, it's doing everything we wanted. The idea that a student like Yu Jeng designed the outfit, that's great, that's the, that's the point. But then also it's been a collaborative process with the students, you know, and that's nice. I feel very honoured, you know, and it's good that it's come, you know, it's come out of the UAL, that's good. That's how it should be. I mean, it was beaded up until last night, and this morning is graduation. You won't see anything else like this. I hereby declare this award ceremony of University of the Arts London open. Today I'm wearing robes designed by a uh, LCF UAL student, Yushan Yan. So give her a moment.
to be honest, I think half of the LCF students help with the rub. And also my classmate Gemma helped me kind of organising people. I say congratulations to Eugene and Nick and all the people at LCF, all the, the dozens of students and their aunties who did the beading on this thing. You really pulled it off. I am very proud to wear it. Well done. It's a relief. <laughs>